Hey everybody, this is Kyle with Simulation Lab here in Brooklyn, New York, once again with another 3D Studio Max tutorial using TIE Flow. And today we're going to be doing uh, some soft body dynamics. Um, so I recently just made like a really simple little video with these uh, squishy pumpkins. And the sound design is not so good, but you know, I'm not. I'm not the best sound designer, but uh, anyway, I had a little bit of extra time uh, today. Been kind of slammed with project work lately, which is a good thing. And pay my bills, you know. You got to pay your bills, right? But I had a little bit of extra time today. I wanted to create a quick little tutorial about using soft body dynamics, um, similar to that pumpkin scene. But today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to be doing the same effect. Um, that I use for these pumpkins, but we're gonna do it on a brain. So we're gonna make a squishy brain that's gonna fall and maybe like hit some spikes or something. I don't know. Um, so there's a couple different ways of doing soft body dynamics using tie flow. We're gonna explore one way today that I use to create the pumpkins. Um, but it, it's a bit of an outdated way. There's there is a newer way which will which will cover maybe towards the end of the video. I'll explain what the other the various way the various methods are for doing soft body stuff. Um, but today we're going to be using slightly un, like an older way, but it's still like super effective and it's to me it's a lot faster and it's, it works really great. So we're going to be using physics objects. Uh, we're going to populate the brain with voxels and then create little physics objects that are bound together inside the brain. And then it's going to be, and then those are going to have like a sort of like a, a rigid joint that are binding each of the voxels together. And then that's going to give it a little bit of a gooey, wobbly effect. Um, so we'll, we'll go through that, and then we're at, toward the end of the video, we'll cover some basic scene setup or rendering. Um, and then I'll, I'll show you guys the settings that I use to, to, do, uh, to do this one. Very simple. There's two lights in the scene. There's a basic backdrop. Um, very simple materials. This this has slightly more complex material with some fall off on it. Um, we might do a little bit of that in this tutorial with the brain, but um, very simple setup. Uh, so we'll cover that stuff too. Okay, let's get into this. So if you're starting from the completely bl blank scene, I have a brain already imported in here. I just downloaded this off like Turbo Squid or something. Um, but typically, you know, first things first, set up your units if it's important, right? Um, mine are set to centimeters, one unit equals one centimeter in case you're following along. And I think the brain itself is not, it's not very big. It's like, um, something like a 12, 12 centimeter radius, it's like 24 centimeters across, something like that. Excuse me. Um, okay. So first things we, first thing we want to do is um, maybe we'll drag our brain up here a little bit. And we're gonna wanna create a, a container that we will be spawning or birthing our um, our voxels inside of. We can't do it with this brain because the brain is super high poly, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simplified version of the brain to fill with voxels. And then later on, after we're done with our simulation, we're going to reference this high-res brain model um, as a type uh, as a skin, right? So we're going to be using the uh, Typhol particle skinner modifier. So first things first, what we want to do is uh, is create a simplified version of the brain, just as a little. It doesn't have to be super perfect, but we want to get it pretty close. Uh, there's a couple different ways of doing this. Uh, we're just going to do it probably with a sphere for right now. And I guess, you know, what we could do is just drop this back down to zero. Um, a couple ways of doing this. We could, like, super optimize this. So we could, what we could do is, like, you know, I'm going to take a copy of the brain. I think I have a, to get rid of this Turbo Smooth. And then we can optimize the shit out of it using Pro Optimizer and bring down the poly count significantly. Um, maybe, like, 10. So you could do something like that. Ooh. Something like that might work. There's still a ton of polygons, so we could just use like a basic sphere. It's not a really big deal. Um, 
so what I'll probably want to do is like just maybe quickly model this little this brain here, just like a super simple version of it. And what I might do is uh, do like a four by four. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. It just got to be. It's got to basically cover the bounds of the brain. And again, depending on the complexity of the geometry or complexity of the model that you're using, you probably don't. You probably not even have to do this. But since our brain model is pretty complicated, we're going to want to have to. We're going to want to do this. Okay. It's actually pretty good. All right, we're gonna right click on that object properties, set it to not renderable. In this case, we'll do um, do see through. That way we can still see it. Cool. Um, okay. You know, one more thing I might do is go in the front view. I drag these down a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now we have our object that we're going to be birthing voxels into, and you could just right click on this and go convert to editable poly since we don't need the modifiers on there or anything. And you can see like it sort of encompasses the brain, which is which is basically what we want. Um, so from here, what we'll do is we'll drag these up. And we'll just do it for one brain for now, and then we'll uh, maybe add a few more later. So we'll go ahead and create a typhal object there. And open the editor. Check this out a little bit. Okay. Good. Uh, first thing we'll do is burst some voxels. And then we're going ahead and pick the sphere that we made, and the, we'll set this to geometry. And then what we'll do is um, add a shape operator in here. I'll do some maybe some low res geospheres for now, and that should be pretty good. And then we're going to want to set this to something a little bit lower, maybe like one, two. We'll stick with one for now and see how that works. And you could do grains or grid. Um, in this case, maybe we'll do grains. It seems to follow the pattern of the brain a little bit uh, more efficiently. So we'll stick with grains for now. And this might be too many voxels, but we'll we'll figure it out. And we could like maybe drag our brain up a little bit. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay. So now that we have that set up, we can completely ignore our brain model for right now. We're going to be using that later. Um, what we want to do is uh, add a physics shape modifier uh, operator in here. And we'll leave all these settings where they're at for now. And then we'll come back and play with them a little bit. And then we'll do a physics bind. And we'll do set that to be a rigid it's thinking okay let's see is this too many maybe we'll lower this down a little bit just for now so my computer's not chugging on this uh set this to a rigid joint the physics bind type rigid joint um and then from here we'll do a physics collision right and then we're going to add a couple, maybe we'll add some uh, some spikes for the brain to fall on or something. By default, the gravity is turned on in the physics uh, properties here. So in 
the default gravity is set to negative one and there is a ground collider set up so regardless of what happens it's going to collide with the ground it'll probably do that now see cool and you can tell that it already has a bit of a give to it it already has a little bit of a bounciness to it which is pretty cool it's kind of what we want so that means that the uh, physics bind operator is working effectively to bind all the particles together. We didn't even have to mess with any settings. So it kind of depends on your scene scale. Um, and you might have to adjust some of the um, the uh, bind parameters. But for now, this is working okay. So we'll stick with this. Uh, stick with that for right now. Uh, yes. Back to what we were doing, though. We're going to add some spikes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add a cone. Yeah. Maybe we'll copy on the cone a little bit. We don't want this to look too evil. We want it to look kind of cute. So, uh, you know what we might do first is we'll set up a camera real quick. And so we're gonna we're using V-Ray. Just make sure that's all set up. Yep. So I got V-Ray next installed. Um, we'll set this to 1080 by 1080. Nice little square. Um, resolution there. Physical camera. I mean, we'll like put it uh, somewhere here. And typically the way I like to set these up is I like to have this corner up here be my camera. I don't know why. You can do whatever you want. And then go click on a V-Ray cam, click on your camera, and do show safe frames. And then it'll give you the square um, aspect ratio. So that should be cool. Now that, that'll let us to kind of um, just do a little bit of art direction on our Click on the target. A little bit of arc direction on the placement of the cones. So now that we have this set up, I um, want to make sure that our brain is out of the way, which it looks like it is. That's good. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a plane as well, because we're able to use that for rendering later. And we don't really need it as part of the simulation for now. So, okay, we got a plane in there. Actually, you know what? We'll do the plane later. For now, let's just focus on getting our sim finished. Okay. So, in our physics collision operator, we'll go ahead and select all of our spikes, our cones, add those. And then, let's see what happens when we sim this out. pretty cool. Maybe we'll have it maybe I'll move this over to the top of like one of the bigger spikes here. Just see what happens. I kind of want to see it like it's stuck. And we could we could have them rip apart. I don't really want to do that. Um, for this I kind of want to just have them be kind of gooey. So we'll uh, let me just like adjust our bind spring settings a little bit. Maybe we'll set us to like ten thousand in your in your spring settings there, and see what that does. Okay, cool. Now we have that set up. Let's check out how these are working. Now that looks like it might be okay. Kind of gets stuck, ugh, gets impaled, and then kind of gets stuck on that one cone. All right, cool. So we'll see how that works. Um, we might want to increase our sub steps a little bit, maybe to eight, to clean up any unnecessary noise we have going on. And then what we'll do is we'll grab each of our brains. This is our sort of last step. We want to make sure the brains are kind of like encompassed within the little, um, within the little voxels. So with that selected, we'll go and add our tie particle skin modifier. And we'll select tie flow object. And then if we run this, you could already tell it starts to work. 
We've got our brain following our voxels, and then whatever happens to the particles, it reflects on our brain. So the brain gets squished, and then it kind of gets gooey. So that's pretty cool. And you can tell it's like kind of morphing and wiggling. It's a little messy though, so what we might want to do is increase the voxel size. So in our voxel birth, we have a set to two, it may go down to like 1.25. Right. And we can see how that works. That should be a little better. It's going to squish the brain, but that's kind of what you want to have happen anyway. And what you could probably do is instead of putting the turbo smooth underneath that, put it on top. Hey guys, sorry, my headphones died. Okay, anyway, so I think we're getting there. Um, I switched. Real quick, um, let me show you what I did here. So I switched my bind solver to the type to distant spring. I used to have, I had it at rigid joint and I tried rigid glue. These two, like the bindings were too rigid. They were still giving it a little bit of a give, but um, I found that distant spring works a lot better for that sort of more gooey look that I'm looking for. So that's all I changed there. Uh, and then I added a couple more brains here, and then if we scrub, we can see how this is looking. So we can tell that they're looking much more gooey if we look at the camera. So as they fall, they don't get ripped, they don't get torn, which is good. And then they sort of like wiggle around. And they act sort of like how you would expect like brains to, to fall onto these spikes. It would be cool if they got impaled. Maybe we can do a little bit of tearing, but I think for this is pretty good. And from here we can do a lot of other things. We can uh, maybe use Phoenix FD um, and uh, like a noise map or something um, in the uh, as the particles are emitting from the brains or something. We can create some kind of fluid or something. Um, to represent you know, blood or something, but I think for this, this is this is looking pretty good for now. All right, guys. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there was a couple of different ways of doing soft body dynamics stuff. Um, the method that we've been going with, um, using physics shapes um, created with voxels, um, is a really simple method. If you have scenes that are already in your object, already, if you have objects that are already in your scene, right? Um, you have a model, you want to do something with that model, right? But let's say if you wanted to spawn that model or birth multiples of that model, right? Like, like 10 or 100 different shapes using that one model, right? Um, you can birth them. It's a little bit tricky to make soft body dynamics with those birthed objects. There is one method that's pretty good so far, but there's just a couple things I haven't personally been able to figure out yet. And one method is using TETS. And that's the new, um, newly implemented, one of the newly implemented features of, of TIEFLOW. Um, so I just created a new, just really quickly as a test, uh, just to show you guys what, what, what this is doing. Created a new um, brain here and uh, I birthed it. I applied a force of gravity, a little, a little, just a little bit of gravity there. Um, and then I applied a TETS operator and then Tets are short for tetrahedrons, so basically what it does is it uh, takes, basically it kind of acts as like voxels, but tetrahedron form, I don't know. So it uh, fills the volume of your object, whatever you feed it to birth, um, with tets, with tetrahedrons. And then you can set the radius of the tetrahedrons. So I did like 1.5, which gives me these little um, prism, prism looking, you know, tetrahedron shapes, right? Um, and then I played around with clustering them. The idea here is um, is that uh, I create a series of clusters, and then as they fall on the spikes, the, the brain kind of rips apart according to those clusters. Um, 
this is in the example. There is an example scene in the tie flow examples of doing uh, tet based like tearing and stuff like that using you know clusters. Um, so that's kind of where I got that from. And I don't know. You don't really have to use that, but regardless, um, converted the, the tets to cloth. I did one particle bind. Uh, if you want to do it this way, you got to stitch the zero length binds. Um, got to enable the proximity bind. Did pretty low absolute distance, and then did uh, for the nearest particle. Did optimize sort for tet corners. Got to do that if you're using tets. And then if you're using clusters, you got to enable the clustering and put the channel clusters here, like it's whatever you call that here. Um, and then simulation groups, you got to do overlapping. And that's pretty much it for that one. And then that's a, that's the first particle bind that binds them all together. And then this one um, binds them. Well, this one binds them according to the clusters, right? And this one binds them and then allows them to be breakable, right? So I just checked break, breaking 100%. Everything else is the same as the previous particle bind. Um, we don't need that. Um, I was just doing a little bit of a play, playing around here. OK, so I'll show you guys what this is doing. Um, so the tets using cloth is pretty interesting. It gets a pretty interesting effect. Um, it takes a lot of tweaking to get it right. Uh, on the f on the Facebook forum for TyFlow, there was um, a post of some people using tets. One thing I have yet to figure out, like I mentioned before, is um, basically this is a low res tet object, right? Low res version. Let's say if you wanted to point to a high res version of the model, like the original brain that we had. Um, I'm not sure how to do that. Particle skin kind of works, but it messes up. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't like bind the, it doesn't, it doesn't skin the original brain model to the bind particles of the tets like it does similarly to the physics voxels when the voxels are bound together with the physics object physics bind, right? So it's a little different. Uh, I'm not sure yet how to do that, how to like, you know, replace the high res mesh with the low res mesh and have the low res drive the high res. I'm not sure how to do that yet. Um, I'm going to test this a little bit more. Maybe we'll cover this in a separate video or something. Um, Tyson, the developer of TyFlow, obviously, um, mentioned that there will, there might be um, automatic skinning of TED objects in the future. So that's pretty exciting. So that, that's definitely going to be the way to go for stuff like this. But you can see in a low res version, I kind of have my particle uh, stimulation stuff pretty low here. Actually, I got rid of my uh, floor plan. But you can kind of see what it's doing. It, like it goes around, it kind of tears, it tears the bindings. And then on this object, you can do like a tie weld and make it turn real smooth. And uh, obviously, we can increase our sub, our simulation steps, um, but you can kind of see what it's doing. It kind of tears it apart, and it's pretty cool. Um, tears the brain apart. Obviously, you don't have a collider at the bottom there, but um, it's definitely getting there. It's definitely really cool. So that's that's uh, that'll be a way that you can uh, birth like multiple objects and then do um, uh, like a TET-based uh, soft body dynamics between those birth objects, which is really cool. Anyway, we'll go back to our previous um, exercise with using um, the physics bind to, uh, to bind voxel particles and uh, continue with our simulation there. We'll continue on with our render settings. Uh, let's, um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and create a plane, even though I just removed one. Um, and this, what we'll do is we'll kind of angle this so it's parallel to the camera. Reduce our length segments. It probably would. This is just going to make a backdrop. This is not part of our simulation or anything. If you hold Shift and drag on the Z axis, um, it'll copy up a plane from any edge. We'll select that inner edge, do a chamfer modifier there, and to the standard chamfer, increase this a little bit, something like that. Okay, I'll put on like 20 segments, and that'll just give us a little, nice little backdrop. 
see that it's kind of like this endless backdrop there, which is kind of cool. Um, so from there, we'll, um, we'll set up some lights, and we can play with the positioning of our camera a little bit. Um, so really simple, um, B-Ray, and maybe we'll do a disk light. Put that there, raise it up. And we'll angle it. This is very simple, quick and dirty. Uh, being that our camera's there, we want the brains to be, okay, so we'll maybe bring this back a little bit more. And all this stuff is just stuff that you'll have to do, you just tweak forever. Um, but that's probably pretty good. Turn this back a little bit. Lights get brighter the further or the closer they are to the subject. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then we'll do a secondary light. We'll just copy this one over. And we'll put it like something like that. And I'm just doing this really quick and dirty. Something like that. I'm going to make this. Like that, so it gives a little bit of a light on the side there. Bring this back a little bit more. That should be okay. And then one thing, one other light we're going to add is a linear going on the top, just to wash the background, so we don't have like a dark, sh we don't have like a hard shadow. So we'll just create a planar light, make it about that big. And we'll angle this according to our. I'm not even using that. I'm sorry. I angle this according to our plane there. Kind of drag this up. And we'll rotate it on the local. And that should do it. We'll kind of see how that starts to look. Um, okay. Real quick, I just want to make sure that these spheres are hidden. Okay, they're not renderable. That's good. And then in our... So we have the materials started for these brains. Um, okay. So we have the materials started for the brains, but we'll tweak that in a little bit. Maybe we'll add... We'll create a material real quick for our backdrop. And in this case, maybe we'll do like a white background a little bit of off-white and yeah, like a little bit of reflectivity it's probably good and then actually I, I think I want to make the the cones the same material as the um, uh, quick tip if you select something and you want to select the similar objects in the scene, you can do Control Q, and that'll select all of the cones that you made. Um, I probably want to do that the same material as the background. We'll kind of see how that looks. I'm thinking the cones and the background are the same color. They're pink. Maybe maybe we'll do like a blue. I kind of like the pink and blue aesthetic thing. It's kind of fun. So maybe we'll do like a light blue. I don't know. Um, okay, now that we have that set up, maybe we'll put like an HDRI background in. So, um, quick way to get to your environment, your background environments, is you hit the 8 key, and that'll bring up your environment and effects. Um, click on Use Map, and we'll add a V-Ray. HDRI, and then we'll drag this into your material editor, and we'll clone it as an instance. And now we can modify it. Our HDRI, which in one of my previous tutorials, I left a, a link um, for a really good HDRI website. Here, I can pull that up again. Um, it's called HDRI Haven. HDRI Haven. Check this out. These are really good HDRIs. I use them pretty frequently. And if you use them a lot, you can support the creator of the HDRIs on his Patreon page here. But yeah, you can scroll through here. All of these are, HDRIs are really good. They even have some um, 
studio backgrounds and all kinds of different outdoors and indoors. Pretty helpful, so I'll just use one from there. We'll select this to spherical. And then typically our inverse gamma, we'll maybe increase this to like 1.5. We'll not have to play with that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So now we have that set up. Um, and our render settings. So before we render this out, um, maybe we'll tweak our brain material and adjust our render settings a little bit. So our brain material, we want it to be a little bit reflective. Not half a bunch. Put a little bit of glossiness on it, like, like 0.7. It's pretty good. And then uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of fred, um, fennel. To, I don't know, let's see how that looks. Um, okay, so we adjusted our output size 1080 to, by 1080 for a square resolution. Um, leave this single for now. We can use the progressive renderer. I think in this case, maybe we'll just try the bucket. Uh, we'll leave our min subdivi subdivisions at 1, max at 4. Global DNC, DMC, we can lock the noise pattern. Uh, that's something that we're going to want to do for our animation, so the, the grain stays the same per frame. Um, primary engine, engine will use brute force, and we'll leave all this the same. We'll just kind of see how it starts to look. Um, that's pretty much it for the settings there. Um, this is a very simple scene again. Um, one thing I do want to do is I want to decrease this light value. Maybe we'll just do 10. This might be super blown out. We'll just have to see how it looks. But um, if you have V-Ray Next, you can do Start IPR. Okay, obviously it's very dark, so we'll have to increase our um, lights. But we can lock, let's lock the uh, V-Ray camera here. And then so here we'll increase our lights. Alright, Let's get in there. And then our camera. Maybe we can uh, decrease our film speed. Or sorry, increase our film speed. It's looking looking okay. And then maybe we'll scrub the timeline a little bit. We'll stop this and we'll scrub a little bit until we see some brains there. Okay, and we'll see how these start to look. That should look pretty good. I think our brain is okay. I think what we could do also is increase our light up here a little bit. Wash everything a little bit more. So it kind of looks like daylight. That might be okay. I might reposition this one a little bit. Get a little bit more fun angle on the, the brains with this light, and a little bit less. I'll increase this guy a little bit. Um, we still want the shadows to come from the right side, I think. Uh, it just feels right for the scene. Um, so we're going to leave it like that. Um, I think that's looking pretty good. I think our HDRI is adding a little bit of color variation, which is cool. We have our brain material. I like the frontal. I kind of like what it's doing. It's nice and shiny. Play with the color a little bit. Make it a little bit more blue. Yeah, let's go with more of like a sea foam. I like that. Maybe make the pink a little bit more pink. I'd say that's looking pretty good. So now we can stop our IPR and get rid of that. Um, if you want to do like a test render of this, 
to see what it looks like in the uh, full resolution. Do that. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. You can tell there's still a little bit of noise, which we can clean that up um, by increasing our max subdivisions here. Um, the more you increase that, of course, the longer the rendering is going to take. Um, but if you're like me and you use multiple rendering engines, um, I have a few installed. I really like F-Storm. I use that all the time. The only thing you can't do with it is render particle stuff uh, from Phoenix FD um, in really large, um, like massive simulations like that. Kind of maxes out your VRAM pretty quickly. So it's like, it's, uh, it, I usually the scenario is I use V-Ray for any kind of like liquid, liquid simulations and stuff like that. So what we'll do now is we'll convert this scene to F-Storm and we'll continue with F-Storm. But I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's very easy. If you have a V-Ray scene already set up, it's pretty easy to convert to F-Storm. Um, so what we'll do is I'll just go ahead and save this scene. And then in our, we'll just, in our renderer, we'll choose F-Storm. And that'll wipe our materials out and what we can do is in F-Storm settings under tools and convert scene to F-Storm. And that converts all of our materials. I mean, I have to adjust a couple things. We'll change this back to spherical environment, our environment back there. Uh, and we'll change our gamma to something like uh, 1.5 again, something like that. And then in our environment, our environment is already added there. We we'll might increase the, sorry for the, Sirens, I live in Brooklyn, and there's constantly sirens, car alarms, and noise. Anyway, increase our multiplier of our environment to something like two. Um, our kernel settings, light samples will do something like 12, max depth is something like 24, and our noise threshold is something like zero. And, um, Static noise, by default, in F-Storm is checked, so you can just leave that checked. Um, if you want to assume the lighting scenario from your HDRI map, you can choose Direct Lighting Kernel, and that will, wherever your sun is at in your HDRI lighting, it'll assume that sun and it'll cast the light, it'll cast the light from the HDRI, which is really helpful, but in this case, we're using some artificial lights that we created to have a little bit more control. So, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave that off. Um, and still got 1080. All right, cool. And we'll see how this looks. It might be super blown out um, because F-Storm and V-Ray is a little different with the lighting. So what we'll do is uh, under interactive render, we'll do run RT mode. And uh, yes, exactly what I thought. It's extremely bright. So I have to bring our lights down quite a bit. Something like 12. Four. And Presto Changeo. V-Ray to F-Storm. Pretty easy, huh? So that's looking okay. We'll bring this down a little bit more. Kind of want it to be like a uniform light pattern there. Uh, let's keep it at six. And this one will decrease this quite a bit. We have something like two. All right, guys. Um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If there's anything that was confusing, um, let me know. Also, if you do figure out the whole, the TET method um, using ClothBind and uh, the Cloth Solver, uh, let me know. Uh, leave a comment below. Also, if you figure out a really efficient way of uh, driving a high resolution model with a low resolution TET simulation, um, let me know. I'm really interested to, to dive deeper into this uh, soft body dynamic stuff using TET-based TET simulation. It's really cool. Um, also, uh, if, you, if you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm gonna continue making these tutorials if uh, people find them useful. All right guys, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.